Welcome to the Mind Matters Podcast, hosted by Gordon Bruin, a licensed clinical mental health counselor. In this insightful podcast, Gordon explores the intricate relationship between the mind and the brain, shedding light on the fascinating world of psychology and neuroscience. By delving into this complex interplay, the podcast will empower you with a deeper understanding of your mental processes, paving the way for personal healing and growth. Join Gordon weekly as he unravels the mysteries of the mind, offering valuable insights and practical guidance for your mental health and a more profound connection with your inner self. Let your future pull you forward rather than your past dragging you down. I love the story that Viktor Frankl tells of what he learned in uh, the concentration camps. Again, for anyone who might not be familiar with Viktor Frankl, he spent three years incarcerated during World War II in uh, the, the German concentration camps and experienced the most horrific suffering, um, not only himself, but watching his fellow prisoners. But he talked about the significance of being able to look towards the future in order to survive what was happening in the present moment. And this is what he said. The prisoner who had lost faith in the future was doomed. I once had a dramatic demonstration of the close link between the loss of faith in the future and this dangerous giving up. My senior block warden was a fairly well-known composer an artist, and he confided in me one day. He said, I would like to tell you something, doctor. I have had a strange dream. A voice told me that I could wish for something, that I could only say what I wanted to know and my questions would be answered. And what do you think I asked for? That I would like to know when the war would be over for me. You know what I mean, doctor? For me. I wanted to know when we here in our camp would be liberated and our sufferings would come to an end. And Dr. Frankel said, and when did you have this dream? In February, 1945, he answered. It was then the beginning of March. Well, what, what did your dream voice answer? Assertively, he whispered to me, March 30th. Then he told me about his dream or when he told me about his dream, he was still full of hope and convinced that the voice of his dream would be right. But as the promised day drew nearer, the war news that reached our camp made it appear very unlikely that we would be free on the promised date. On March, and this is what's the most significant about him telling the story. On March 29th, this individual suddenly became ill and ran a high temperature. On March 30th, the day his prophecy had told him that the war and suffering would be over for him, he became delirious and lost consciousness. On March 31st, he was dead. From outward appearances, he had died from typhus. Those who know how close the connection is between the state of mind of man, his courage and hope or lack of them, and the state of immunity of his body understand that the sudden loss of hope and courage can have a deadly effect. The ultimate cause of my friend's death was that the expected liberation did not come and he was severely disappointed. This suddenly lowered his body's resistance against the latent typhus infection. His faith in the future and his will to live had become paralyzed and his body fell victim to illness. And there's a couple of individuals, when I read this story, I think of a couple of individuals I'm working with in therapy right now. They're both young men in their 20s, and they are in a state of paralysis, meaning they're paralyzed in life. They've had so many negative experiences and they have such little um, confidence in themselves that, that they've become stuck 
they're, they're frozen. And this one of the individuals I was working with this past week, and he was telling me about how he felt about himself, saying things like, there's, there's just nothing I like about myself. As I review my life, I can't find anything that I've done that's really significant. I'm not, I'm not good really at anything. I'm not good at sports. I'm not good in relationships. I'm not good in school. And it was just this, this onslaught of self-loathing where he has completely lost faith, lost faith in himself, lost faith in God. He's trying to understand God. And, and then I introduced this concept to him. I said, okay, look. And, and I says, one year from now is coming. Two years, three, four, five. And I asked him to project himself five years into the future and to look at, at that particular date five years from the day we were talking. It was in, this is July 2023 we're talking. So it was July the 9th, 2023. And I said, there's going to be a July the 9th, 2028. The day is coming. We cannot stop time from moving forward. And I said to him, in that day, July, on that day, July the, the, the 9th, 2023, there are a million different possible versions of yourself. There's one that has, there's one that could be, you know, graduated from college, could be strong and healthy, married, have, have a couple of kids even by then. And there's another one down into the despondency of addiction. And I asked him to, to look into the future and to find a representation of himself, the most perfect representation that he could even imagine himself becoming. And I, and I told him, do you, or I asked him this question, do you believe that such a possibility exists? And here's the interesting thing. He said, yes, I do. Because we know we're going to move forward in time. We cannot stop it. And even though he is in a horrible state right now, the, the challenge is he's not connected to his future at all because of the experiences of the past. And this is, this is why I believe we need to shift in, in the field of psychology and human development is that we need to focus more on the future than we're doing on the past. As I have spent thousands of hours in, in a therapeutic relationship with clients through the years. The main thing we were taught as therapists in school is basically to focus on the past, to uncover traumas. Let's figure out what happened. Let's get to the root of the issues so that we can resolve it and move forward. Now, there's purpose in that, and there's meaning in that. Uh, I'm thinking of a book called Trauma and Recovery by Judith Herman. Absolutely, there is an essential part of recovery to listen to a person's experience and to bear witness to their suffering, to not doubt them, to not put them down, but to simply try to understand and reflect that understanding to a person to acknowledge their great suffering so that they don't feel that they are alone. Having done so, and then there's some, some uh, even EMDR therapy is, is absolutely very beneficial. I've been trained in EMDR and I've done EMDR with a number of clients. It does something. Somehow with the, uh, the subconscious mind, EMD, EMDR puts things in place and resolves some things and, you're, and, and the raw issues of remembering certain past traumas seems to be resolved. It, that's been my experience. So there is work to do with resolving the past, but what we've been lacking is being able to project ourselves into the future and to create in our mind's eye the perfect version of ourselves and then 
focusing on that and letting that version pull us forward so that, so that we have something to look forward to. Present events in our lives draw meaning from future outcomes. Only when we are connected to the future do we have, have any meaning to, to push us forward to get something done today. So project yourself into the future. Look at the, the possible realities of your future self that can come about. Learn to, in your imagination, to connect with this, this, this representation of yourself and let that person pull you forward. There is meaning in existence. There is meaning in life. And, and anyway, just ponder on these, these ideas and, and let them resonate with you and help that pull you forward for, for those who are stuck in the present moment, the work is not focusing so much on the past. It's projecting yourself into the future and creating a possible reality that is coming that is totally different from the state you're in at this particular moment. Thank you for joining us. If you want more in-depth knowledge and tools to aid your recovery journey, Check out Gordon Bruin's book, Recovery Simplified. Gordon dives deeper into the complex mind, offering a comprehensive guide to the recovery process. To get your hands on this priceless resource, visit our website at gordonbruin.com, where you'll find more information about Recovery Simplified and how it can be a powerful companion toward healing and personal transformation.